Patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. Is this Kevin Biggio for real? Ooh, the annual question. Yeah. I am a believer in Biggio. Um, it's difficult to overstate how much this organization likes him. Like if you could take Kevin Biggio's brain and instincts and put them in every player, like this is a better team. Like his instincts and how he thinks the game are pretty special. Um, now over the years, now has he dealt with struggles with, you know, uh, hard fastballs up in the zone? Sure. There's been injuries as well along the way. He had the neck injury. There was one point in 2021 where he was taking a ball off the knuckles like every three days. He's been beaten up. But I think coming up, and I wrote this same sentence 500 times, the young core of Vladdy, Bo, and Kevin Biggio, that was kind of miscast, you know, and, and I was certainly part of that. But now I think you see him in the type of position he should be in, which is playing some outfield, playing some infield, moving around. He's a smart guy. He's a thoughtful guy, and he understands how this works. So it was actually him who went to John Schneider this offseason. He said, listen, I know I can be better in the outfield. I know I'm athletic. Let me try that out. You'll see him there a bit more. He needs to hit. He needs to be reaching base at that 350 clip we know he's capable of. But if he can stay, guys, a useful part of this roster, and I just mean getting every day, or not every day, sorry, every other day at bats, if he can stay in that lineup semi-regularly, I think Biggio benefits from these rule changes almost as much as anybody. Because what is he, 26 for 27 in the big leagues and stolen bases? He is sneaky fast, and he picks his spots so well. Like, he picks his spots to run as well as anyone on this roster. So I think he will be someone who thinks those new rules very well and uses his instincts. And if he can hit, he needs to reach base. There's real value there. Okay, great. Uh, next one comes in from Drake. It says, Manny Machado's contract extension has turned his deal with the Padres into $470 million over 14 years, essentially. Uh, who is the first player you see just straight up breaking $500 million? And does it happen this upcoming offseason or next? Wow. I'm trying to think across the league. So many of these young guys are tied up long term. Even when you look down at the Wander Francos, the Julios, who I think are the next superstars of this game. Don't think it'll be Vladdy at that number. Not yet. Maybe not with the Blue Jays. You look at someone like a Juan Soto, which is going to be massive. Shohei Otani is such a wild card for me because let's, let, let's take a Vladdy or a Juan Soto. You can line up all 26 or sorry, all, all 30 teams who will be bidding on, on that player. Most of their overall totals, not in terms of what they would pay, but where they, where they valuate them. You know, they say this player is probably going to make this much. All 30 guesses are going to be pretty close. We know how those players work. For Shohei Otani, you are going to have a massive gap. And somewhere in there, the Mets, you're going to see a team that absolutely blows their brains out to get Shohei Otani. Now, what does he look like at 40? I, I don't know. But is he a guy that's getting 45, 50 mil a season? Because if he is, you don't need a ton of you don't need 14 years to chase Machado. I think contracts are going to continue exploding, which I mean, hell yeah, I want players to have money, not the owners. Good. But I think something I try to keep in mind with all these deals, too, is that for someone like Machado, having a 30, 35 mil a year right now is oh, okay, that's pretty high. By 2034, is that going to be a normal salary for a a decent guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it always surprises me that some of these salaries don't climb a bit more as the years go, or that more players don't negotiate it in terms of a, a percentage of, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Easier to do in a, a cap based league like the NFL. But by the time you get to the end of these contracts, yeah, this player is going to be beaten down. Maybe you're cutting them four years early, but 30 million bucks in a decade is going to be different than 30 million bucks today. Neither mm -hmm. are numbers I can comprehend anytime, but yeah. if you own a baseball team, you know, if you're Steve Cohen, 30 million bucks is like me going out to buy a single drink, you know, that's fine. It's well, really interesting when you look at uh, just the agents, right? Because we just watched Ronald Acuna Jr. fire his agent, right? And yeah. you can tell he's not pleased with it. But if you're Manny Machado, you've got to be like celebrating the fact that your agent literally put you in the place to be the highest paid player in baseball. 
And who would have guessed that would have been Manny Machado in 2023? <laughs> like, it's amazing. It's about putting pressure on at the right time. And if you are an agent like Acuna is, or you see it happen a lot with top prospects when they'll come up with a, like a, a lesser known agent and then leave them for a big name agent, that lesser known agent has to be just hot because they are losing their meal ticket for, you know, yeah. the, the contract they're going to get. So the agent game is fascinating and it's all about creating leverage. And in Machado's case, perfect time. You know, there were even before, you know, I'm sure as you guys saw too, dozens of stories about this is the time to extend Manny Machado. And when people are talking about it and you have a team willing to spend like the Padres who are doing this fascinating thing, which is just trying, it's a really <laughs> special mix. It's really great. Uh, did you right. in a million years, Keegs, think that Manny Machado would opt out? Because that was one scenario I was like, no way. I don't think so. I don't think so. But man, he got paid. Yeah. And now it's like to be on a team that good too, with that level of talent, like even I forget about Tatis coming back after all of the crap he has had going on this mm-hmm. last while, the suspension and uh, prior to that injuries. What a team. And what I a got Nelson team. Cruz too. And he oh, looks Cruz. like he's got the power in his swing this spring training. Oh, oh man. Okay. Uh, you touched on it, but this uh, is a follow-up question related. This is one's from Andrea. Is a salary cap coming? next CBA? Oh, I hope not. Um, even hearing CBA has me worried already. Uh, you know, four or five years I know, we, we just finished the last one. It's uh, because when you look at owners, and this isn't me agreeing with them, this is just me thinking. When other owners are looking at what Steve Cohen's doing, I don't know if they love it. Right. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, or when you look at what the Padres are doing, suddenly if you are Cincinnati or somebody, you're thinking, well, these guys are outspending me 10 to 1. Lower salary teams like that should be aspiring to be the raise, you know, invest in development, invest in analytics, get better somehow. But I hope it continues to stay this way because the way it is right now, I'm seeing a lot of players get paid for their value and getting paid big and getting paid early, which I hope works out in the player's favor because I'm pro player, you know, when it comes to dollars and cents. And so I hope it stays this way. But I think that looking, what I'll say is looking four or five years down the line, I am not looking forward uh, to that year because, um, you know, it's now that we've gone through one, which I hated because I don't care about labor law. I care about, I, I, I do in terms of, you know, employees getting treated fairly, but it's not why I'm in baseball to cover labor law. Mm -hmm. I, once we've gone through that and you know how the language works, I think over the coming years, I think a lot of baseball fans will be a little more able to see, Oh, okay. That's the canary in the coal mine for this. Oh, okay. They're really talking about a labor issue for a few years down the road. These conversations are already ongoing and things that owners do and say are consciously done and said. So I think you're going to be able to see some strands of that over the next few years. Gross. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Last one here, and then we'll let you go. Uh, Comes in from Jen. Blue Jays have a big decision looming at third base. Uh, I don't want your crystal ball guess as to what the Jays do this offseason. Just tell me what the Jays will do over the next eight months to help shape their decision. Do any potential third base prospects get handled differently to maybe help the Jays decide if they can even afford to lose Matt Chapman? I can't take another season of Kevin Biggio at third base. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it won't be Biggio, I don't think. Matt Chapman is going to get paid. I think he has a big year this year. I think he is the exact type of guy with the exact type of mindset who can put up a big year in a contract year. I think he probably bounces back and wins a gold glove. And when Manny Machado signed that contract, Manny Machado was probably number one excited, maybe followed <laughs> by his family and his agent. In fourth place was Matt Chapman. Yeah. yeah. Because he's looking at that. Not only is he seeing the number, he is seeing that guy off the market. And man, Matt Chapman is going to be looking at a really big opportunity next offseason. And for a guy who has the defense, has the bat, <clears throat> I think he's going to be big. I think you'll see a little more Addison Barger, maybe some Arelvis Martinez, but uh, you know, Barger especially. But man, Chapman is uh, he's going to get paid. There's some big money teams that need a third baseman too going into next year. There are when you look across that board, man. And <laughs> Matt Chapman, 
I think I'm trying to even think down that list. Oh, the cool. New Yorks, yeah. right? <laughs> Both yeah. New Yorks. Other third baseman that will be available. And Matt Chapman's a guy that you can bet on pretty confidently. You know, he's not a flashy guy. He does what he does. He's going to get paid. Agreed. Yeah, it's 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 going to um, make his decision to not re-up there with Oakland on that deal they offered. It's oh. going to make that look really smart. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good agent right there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because he also would have been stuck in Oakland. So Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Keegan, honestly, again, man, we so love sitting down and chatting baseball with you and picking your mind. So really appreciate you taking the time. Um, Enjoy your few days back in Toronto and uh, safe travels back to Florida. Definitely appreciate it, guys. Anytime at all, but uh, always a good time. Thank you for having me. Have a good one, Dad.